standardized treatment were given to seven states. The seven states were mostly red states. And it was Alabama, Texas, Florida, yeah, well, Georgia. Well, why is that, though? And, and why is that? I understand, understand that the Biden administration was trying to give, even up the ground for the other states, since these red states, seven red states, including Florida, well, were there's taking, a, there's, there's taking a, but there's, of it. But why, why was that the case? So the question is, you know, last summer, there were a handful of states, and he's terming them red states. I don't know why that would matter. Um, it, 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 who had the Delta wave was a, a southern wave. It hit the south in a seasonal pattern, just like 2020 was a seasonal pattern. Now you're seeing a seasonal wave in the northeast. Um, and as much as people like you would like to say this is based on your political affiliation, that's not how virus viral curves work. So we were using more of it because we had more prevalence, but I'd say just as significantly, we actually embraced the treatment. Uh, I was attacked when we rolled out this monoclonal site uh, by, by press outlets, by the left. They were attacking me for doing it. They acted like it was like voodoo, that this wasn't something that, and then what you saw is people were getting the treatment, they tell their friends, their neighbors, all of a sudden people uh, were going out, and this was a big thing in Florida because people saw the results of it. So that is why we were using more. Now you're in a situation where you have massive prevalence in places like D.C. and New York and all those other places. They are getting more. But, you know, they haven't embraced it the way that we do. But here's what my question would be. Why are we even in a situation where we are concerned about um, who, who gets what? We've had these available for over a year. Why aren't there enough? If the federal government has taken control of this, why didn't they ensure that there would be plentiful supply of this to be able to keep people uh, from being hospitalized uh, because of COVID. Why were they asleep at the switch on that? Why not do it? And, and why, especially after you saw the positive effect it had in dealing with Delta in, in the southern states, why wouldn't you have done it? And look, they're under no obligation in some respects to, um, you know, to purchase this on their own. But when they don't let us do it, when they have these exclusive agreements, then that's a huge problem. So let us buy some. We will buy some. You know, we bought as much citrovimab as we could. That's now off the table. So let's just be real here. The fact that we're even talking about over a year, this stuff came out in December of 2020 under EUA. Citrovimab came out in the spring of 2021 under EUA. There's plentiful time for them to have gotten this in gear. And I think the fact that, that, that they haven't is um, part of it they don't believe in the treatment. Uh, they they said, remember Fauci said, if 50% get vaxxed, COVID will there'll be no more waves. Well, we have way more than that across the country, and you know you still have you have some of the biggest waves you've seen yet. So, so that was wrong, uh, but they're not willing to pivot to to the treatments, and I just think that that's unfortunate. But why you would try to play politics with it? You know, the people that are coming to get treatments, like you know, you say red state or not? How do you know? I mean, is that that person no, either I, way? I, I, I mean, that's just not the way to think about it. That's not true. First of all, that's not true. Florida, excuse me, Florida over the summer and today has had higher vaccination rate than the U.S. as a whole. That's just the fact. We've had the highest in the southeast for pretty much the whole time. We have over 90 percent of our elderly population for many months has, has had vaccination. The fact of the matter is the majority, the vast majority of people who get monoclonal treatments have been vaccinated. I know that doesn't fit the narrative. Go down and look at the Miami-Dade site. They actually put it out every day. How many people got treatments? How many were vaxxed versus not vaxxed? And it's always two, three, four to one vax to unvax. So that's just the reality. And so to use the vaccine as a reason to deny treatment or our policies regarding, and let's be honest, you know, they wanted mandatory vaccinations. That's what they were pushing for, passports, to where you can't go into a restaurant. I mean, a little, a five-year-old kid can't go someplace because he hasn't done this. Um, you know, the clinical trial for five to 11-year-olds for Pfizer found no severe COVID outcomes for either the vaccine arm or the control arm. Nobody got severe COVID in that, in that clinical trial. And it was not a very big clinical trial. And so, okay, 
not one severe case, so you know, why, why, why would you deny a kid the ability to do it? But that's what they want to do. They wanted it to be uh, mandatory to even send a kid to school uh, with COVID vaccine. They wanted a whole bunch of other policies, and, and we resisted that. They wanted people to lose their jobs. If they had their way, you would have police officers fired because of this choice. Firefighters would be terminated because of this choice. Nurses, we've stood up for nurses and saved a lot of jobs. So Florida did that. We were one of the few states that stood up and said, you know, we are not going to deny you the ability to earn a living based off your choice on, on a shot. And that is much different than I think what you've seen fr from the federal leadership. But uh, here we are looking at it now. You know, clearly those uh, heavy handed policies um, have not worked because if they did work, they would not be dealing with any significant COVID right now. And so we just have to understand that and what great cost have they imposed on our social fabric, on our economy, on, on people's conception of, the, of their individual rights. I mean, it has been a disaster. But even putting that aside, the fact that we approached it different from a mandate perspective is not a basis to deny treatment to Floridians who may need it. So. Joe's going to keep fighting, I'm going to keep fighting, we're all going to keep fighting. We have the infrastructure in place. If those shipments come, there'll be a site, another site in Jacksonville the, the next day. If they, if they come, there'll be sites in South Florida, Central Florida, all across. We're ready. We, the legislature, we, we got uh, the money, we have money set aside. We're ready. But we can't do it, we can't give people treatments if the federal government's withholding the treatments. So send us the treatments and let's get it done. Okay, we got to uh, run. Come on, buddy. I have one question. One, one question, doctor. 